Welcome to The Backlash at Backlash.com. My name is Rod Van Mecklen, and in this video I'm going to read excerpts from my 1992 article, Movements, Feminist Fanatics, the full version linked below. Also linked below is a great video Bern Chapin did on Eric Hoffer's must-read book, The True Believer. Now, Movements, starting with a quote. Quote, the irrationalists, like so many of their predecessors and successors in public debate, knew that loud and frequent repetition was the most convincing argument of all. Close quote. Ray Tannehill, Sex and History. Reform versus Revolution, 1992, Bellevue, Washington. The second wave feminist movement began with the publication of Betty Friedan's famous lie, The Feminine Mystique. Her message, that the evolution of female sexuality had stopped, and this was smothering women and frustrating men, inspired millions of women to demand and obtain the same rights as men, but not the same responsibilities. But people are generally conservative, and change seldom happens overnight. The familiar is comfortable, and even if it isn't very satisfying, it takes more than reasoned arguments to shake women free of their suburban domesticity. Quote, as long as the existing order functions in a more or less orderly fashion, the masses remain basically conservative. They can think of reform, but not of total innovation, close quote. Eric Hoffer, The True Believer. Thus, the women's movement, which is actually almost 200 years old, made some progress, but for many of the converted, it wasn't enough, and patience is not a characteristic of the true believer. True believers seldom start movements. Thinkers distill the doctrine and demagogues preach it to the masses. Thus, the thinker and preacher begin movements by attracting and creating the fanatics who stage the revolution. The feminist movement has progressed far beyond this point and is now dominated by fanatics. Female hostility against men is at an all-time high. Well, that was in 1992. Had I known what was to come, I might have added and it will get a lot higher. Continuing, women find it relatively easy to oppress men through abuse of the law, and we have put a name to the creed of feminist fanaticism, pop feminism. Note, while some writers still use that term, which I coined, I have since discarded it, discarded it as what I used to call pop feminism has long since become the dominant strain of feminism. Feminist fanatics. Like all fanatics, feminists threaten their own success. Quote, the danger of the fanatic to the development of a movement is that he cannot settle down. Once victory has been won and the new order begins to crystallize, the fanatic becomes an element of strain and disruption. He keeps groping for extremes, close quote. Eric Hoffer, The True Believer. Hence, the women's liberation movement is incomplete. For that, they require practical women and men of action. Quote, a movement is pioneered by men of words, materialized by fanatics, and consolidated by men of action. Close quote. That was Eric Hoffer again, the true believer. But the feminist fanatics preempted them, replacing Friedan's goal of equality with a new objective, female supremacy. Since women were slow to change, the feminists would force change by dominating men. To this end, they rely on many social, political, and emotional tools, the most potent of which is hate. Quote, hatred is the most accessible and comprehensive of all unifying agents, close quote. Eric Hoffer, The True Believer. Extremists, they attract the attention of the media, who give voice to their intolerance. Intolerant, they attack all men, violating the rights of the many to redress the wrongs of a few. And they hate. Quote, to wrong those we hate is to add fuel to our hatred, close quote. Eric Hoffer, again. Hatred of men is necessary to the feminist movement. Increasing female hostility toward men is utterly necessary to the su success of the feminist agenda. Feminists know this and work hard to promote misandry by vilifying men as most hateable devils. A rapist, for example, is a hateable devil. Quote, all men are rapists, Marilyn French's character said in her novel, The Women's Room, and so all men are devils. Devils are necessary to promote and produce unity. Quote, mass movements can rise and spread without belief in a god, but never without belief in a devil. Eric Hoffer, The True Believer. 
Characteristic of a devil is both his universality and his utterly irredeemable nature. Great belief lends itself to this process of making all men irredeemable by allowing feminists to argue that, at the least, all men are potential rapists. The corollary to this is that, since we could respond to their allegations by arguing all women are potential child abusers, feminists must portray and do portray all women as victims. Susan Brownmiller does this, does both in her book Against Our Will, vilifying all men and framing all women as victims through asserting rapists are agents of the patriarchal, patriarchal domination of women. Catherine McKinnon perpetuates this re reasoning by framing all female behaviors within the context of victimization. Quote, the mother-child relation, described as a relation of dominance, is a consequence of male supremacy, not its ca causal dynamic, close quote. Catherine McKinnon, Feminism Unmodified. Hence, their message is hate, and the vehicle of their hate is the characterization of all men as irredeemable devils, and all women as their victims. Faith of the True Believer. How is it possible to vilify an entire gender? By what means do they obtain evidence with which to condemn all men? The answer is through faith. Through faith they believe all women tell the truth and all men lie. Quote, the reason feminism uncovered this reality, its methodological secret, is that feminism is built on believing women's accounts of sexual use and abuse by men. Close quote. Catherine McKinnon, Feminism Unmodified. By faith they accept every complaint, reproach, and charge women make against men as if all women were perfectly honest or cut from a finer moral fabric than men. Yet, as Tara Roth Madden noted, this is hardly the case. Quote, when the going gets tough, many women loudly blame others, the boss, co-workers, politicians, close quote. Tara Roth Madden, Women vs. Women, The Uncivil Business War. Second wave feminism, and now third wave feminism, has become a distinct movement that has replaced first wave feminism. It's all about greedy individuals using hate and fear to get power for themselves by turning men into scapegoats. 2015 Olympia, Washington. Most of you already know this, but I turned this chapter into a video to turn your attention to Eric Hoffer's book, The True Believer. In the mid-1980s, I came to recognize the feminist movement for what it had become because I had read this book. This is a red pill book you can recommend to your blue pill friends, and they will never suspect it could very possibly be the first step they take toward taking the red pill. But there's more. By reading this book yourself, you will gain insights into how to protect yourself against the feminist fanatics and the thugs who hijack the movement to get power for themselves. And MGTOW is only one step. There are more that follow. These include making money, which I've covered in other videos, taking political action, and internationalizing yourself by learning other languages, visiting other countries, choosing the one or ones that best suit you, and beginning the process of establishing residency and, possibly, citizenship. On internationalizing yourself, the two websites I know that specialize in educating you about this and that also offer their services to help you make the transition are Simon Black's Sovereign Man and Doug Casey's International Man, both linked below. This morning, I was listening to one of Aaron Clary's great videos, What to Do with $150,000, which is linked below. This video was in response to a man who has nailed the MGTOW and money steps and wanted to know what to do next. Aaron had some good advice for him, but I kept waiting for him to mention internationalizing. He didn't. When you become a citizen of multiple countries so that you have at least two passports and then establish yourself financially in at least one other country and then hire experts like International Man or Sovereign Man or whoever to help you establish a trust fund in the other country that removes it from the jurisdiction of your home country and for citizens of the United States, that's no easy task, thanks to the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, or FATCA. But I've read that it can be done. More on that little I know about that in a future video. On taking political action, as Bern Chapin, Aaron Clary, Sandman, and others have pointed out, if you vote for leftists, then you're voting for feminism. Can I cover that up above here? 
one step there. Others include making money, political action, and internationalizing yourself. Yes, I mentioned political action above. So, on taking political action, Bern Chapin, Aaron Clary, Sandman, and others have all pointed out that if you vote for leftists, you're voting for feminism. But you can't simply vote for the right and expect everything to be okay. Progressives long ago infiltrated the infiltrated the liberal ranks of the left and turned it into a cesspool of big government which favors feminism. Starting in the 1980s, unfortunately, progressives also began infiltrating conservatism on the right and have since turned it into a cesspool of big government too, which again fav favors feminists, although conservatives uh, generally speaking aren't real friendly toward feminists. It's the neoconservatives. There's a big difference between the left and the right, however, in that there are almost no true liberals remaining on the left, while there are still true conservatives and true liberals on the right. For example, while I'm on the right, I'm a classical liberal. Rand Paul has said he is a classical liberal. What is classical liberalism? I've linked to some videos and articles below that explain, but uh, generally speaking, Classical liberalism and modern conservatism are generally considered synonymous, and so many people on the right who call themselves conservatives are really classical liberals. And whether they call themselves classical liberals or conservatives, they favor small government, and that's good for men and good for women, but bad for feminism. So if you want to take the wind out of the feminist sails, then you need to get out and vote for classical liberals and even tradcons, but avoid voting for neocons like John Boehner and John McCain. They're big government goons. In the United States, you can generally vote libertarian too, but beware of so-called socialist feminist libertarians like Naomi Wolf, who is a misandrous totalitarian thug masquerading as a small government libertarian. To reiterate, after the red pill comes MGTOW. After MGTOW come the steps to secure yourself financially and to take political action and to internationalize yourself. Political action means vote mail. Not necessarily by voting only for men, but by voting for candidates who favor small government. So remember, vote mail. That's all for now. Check out the other videos. Subscribe to the channel for the backlash at backlash.com. My name is Rod Van Mecklen.